Hey everyone, it's Mr. Morin here. Good to see you all. Well, actually, I can't see you, but you can see me. Hey, just wanted to let you know this is my first inaugural video for the new YouTube channel I'm setting up to hopefully have some more communication from home and school when we can't actually be at school. Hope everybody's doing well, staying healthy, staying safe, and not playing too many video games. All right, so today we're gonna to start off with a book. Since it's St. Patrick's Day, we got on my Lucky Charm shirt so nobody pinches me. I wanted to get into our next unit of study as we've been working on character development in reading. I wanted to share with you today that readers learn lessons while they read. So today I have a book for you that I'm gonna read and we're gonna talk about it a little bit and I'm gonna give you some tips that you can try at home when you're reading your books as well. So today's reading target is to think, what did the characters realize or learn in the story? So the cool thing about fiction stories are they usually contain four components. Number one, there's characters, there's people or animals that are in the story that um, tell the story or are part of the story. Number two, there's a setting in the story. Where does the story take place? Does it happen at school? Does it happen at the zoo? Does it happen out in outer space? Who knows? So you, gotta, you have to figure out those two things. The third thing is sometimes there's a problem in a fiction story. The character might have a challenge or something that they're trying to fix or figure out. And if you have a problem, the fourth component is you need to have a solution. Now a solution is how do you fix the problem? And in the story we're gonna to read today, Clever Tom and the Leprechaun, I chose this one because it's St. Patrick's Day, um, you're gonna notice that we know who the characters are and you'll soon find out where the story takes place. But I want you to look and listen for the problem in the story and then by the end of the story, do they solve the problem? Is there a solution? And heading back to our reading target, I want you to know, hmm, did the characters realize or learn something in the story? Is the story trying to teach us a message? Remember we talked about the heart of the story? Sometimes authors write for a reason, okay? So, without further ado, Clever Tom and the Leprechaun. All right, I'm gonna try to just read it and then I'll show you the pictures afterward. One fine day, on Lady Lay in the Harvest, Tom Fitzpatrick took a ramble down the lane. Click, clack, click, clack, he heard through the hedge. So Tom tiptoed closer to take a look. So there's our character, Tom Fitzpatrick. Looks like he's walking outside by some hedges and bushes. The clacking sound stopped when Tom peered through the bushes. And in the shadow, what did he see? Why, a big gallon pitcher and a teeny tiny man with a brown leather apron and a three-cornered hat. That three-cornered hat reminds me of George Washington. Up the small man climbed on his wee wooden stool and dipped his little piggin into the crock. Then he settled down with his full mug beside him to hammer on the heel of a fairy-sized shoe. By the powers, thought Tom, it's a leprechaun. If I catch him and scare him, he'll give me his gold. Since I'm a clever fellow, that should be simple. Before the sun sets, I'll have me fortune made. So Tom notices there's a leprechaun, and he said, since I'm a clever fellow, Clever is another word that means very smart. If he catches this leprechaun, he's going to have to give him his gold. Sounds like a good plan. Let's see what happens. Tom stared at the leprechaun and tried not to blink. He knew that if he looked away, the old man would escape. Then he crept up quite near and tipped his hat politely, saying, Good day to you, neighbor. Blessings on your work. Thank you kindly, said the small one. But he never looked up. He just kept tapping on the heel piece of the shoe. Tom
Tom moved his hand closer while he smiled very sweetly and said, Today's a holiday. You shouldn't have to work. The leprechaun frowned and answered Tom sharply. If I do, that's my business and none of yours. Instead of pestering me, young man, you ought to be watching your father's fields. Look there, the cows have broken to the oats. See, they're knocking the corn all about. Cows in the cornfield? Tom's head started turning. But he wasn't fooled by the leprechaun's trick. Quickly, he grabbed the sly fellow and cried, Nah, you're my prisoner. Tell me, where is your gold? The leprechaun wiggled and twisted and whined, I'm just a poor man. But Tom held him fast. You and I both know you're lying, said Tom. And he made a fierce, frightening face. Finally, the leprechaun quit squirming and said, Tom Fitzpatrick, you're too clever for me. I see you are after me buried treasure. So I'll have to show you where it is hid. With his eye on the bitty man locked in his fist, Tom followed where the leprechaun led him. He traipsied over a hill and under some hedges and through a ditch and across a peat bog. At last, just when Tom feared he had been hoodwinked. I like that word hoodwinked. That's another fancy word for being tricked, being deceived, being hoodwinked. He found himself in a great field of weeds. Dig there, said the leprechaun, pointing to a bush. Deep under that bullion is where I put my gold. Thunder nation, said Tom. I need to fetch me spade. But when I return, I'll be lost. There are 40 acres of bullions here, and each plant looks just like the other. Still watching the leprechaun, Tom figured out a plan. He tied his bright red garter on the bush. Swear, you old rascal, that you won't take this off while I run to get me spade. That I will promise you, the little man said. Tom grinned, knowing that leprechauns always kept their word. Now, since I have shown you where me treasure is, I don't suppose you need me anymore. No, said Tom. My fortune's made. You may go, and good luck be with you. Then goodbye, Tom Fitzpatrick, said the leprechaun. May you do much good with what you find. And Tom ran away as fast as he could, figuring how'd he spend his gold. Then he came back with his shovel in hand, back to the field of bullions. But when he got there, lo and behold, a garter, just like his own, was tied to each and every bush as far as he could see. If you look carefully, each one of those bushes has a little red garter tied around to it. Now, the leprechaun kept his promise. He told Tom that he wouldn't take off the garter but he never said anything about tying a garter to every bush. So now all the bushes look the same again. Tob dug under the bullion where he thought he had tied his garter, but nothing was buried under that bush. And so he dug under another. He dug to the east and he dug to the west and he still found no treasure. The harvest moon rose as he dug to the north and it set as he dug southward. So Tom definitely has a problem right now. He's trying to find the buried treasure. He thought he had a great plan in place, but the leprechaun 
played a trick on him, and now he's trying to figure out how he's going to solve his problem. When the sun came up, Tom saw he had dug 100 holes, and tired Tom Fitzpatrick knew he couldn't find that gold, so he gave up and headed for home. From then on, Tom always carried his spade, and he never stopped listening for tapping in the field. Every chance he got, he'd tell how he nearly found the leprechaun's gold. And since I'm such a clever fellow, Tom would end his tale, the next time I catch that leprechaun, I'll have me fortune made. So as you can see, Tom is a very old man now. And he's telling his story about the day he caught a leprechaun and almost got his gold. But do you notice he keeps bragging to everybody how clever he was? How smart he was to catch that leprechaun? Here's my question for you. Who do you think was more clever? Tom, because he was able to catch the leprechaun. Or do you think the leprechaun was more clever? Because he did not lie. He kept his word. But... He tricked Tom and still got to keep his fortune. And that's the end of our story. So let's go back to our reading target. What did the character realize or learn in the story? I think that Tom, even though he didn't admit it, when he became an old man, he realized, wow, that leprechaun was probably more clever than me. And he outsmarted me. He tricked me and I never found his gold. But, I don't know, it's up for you to decide. You can infer, who do you think was more clever? And, do you think that Tom will ever catch that leprechaun again? And if he does, will he have a new plan this time? When you're reading your books at home, whatever book it is, try to think about what the characters are doing. Do they have a problem? Can they solve their problem? And, did they learn a lesson at the end of the story like Tom did? All right. You guys have a great day. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you again soon.